What is the deal with all of the bats? Quick refresher for those of you who don't remember, which clearly is all of you. Uh, <laughs> January 26th, a bat was spotted flying around during pregame warmups of a Jazz Timberwolves game in Utah. It was eventually captured by the team's mascot, Jazz Bear, who also happens to be Mark Cuban's hairspiration. <laughs> Five days later, January 31st, three bats swoop down into the middle of a Spurs Nets game in San Antonio, stopping the game for a whole three minutes while they evade capture. After that game, arena officials decided to put up some netting in an effort to keep this from happening again. Two nights later, February 2nd, it happens again. <laughs> Another bat on the court in San Antonio, this time interrupting a game versus the Pelicans. And once again, a mascot had to save the day. Here comes the Coyote. And the he's coyote. ready this time. He's ready tonight. Get him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. One more attempt. Yes. Oh, the Coyote got him. Go ahead and chow down, Coyote. Less than a week later, February 7th, a bat shows up in Indiana during the first quarter of a Pacers-Clippers game. Country reaches out with his left hand and nearly snags it. Now Boomer is involved in the chase. The bat has gone behind the basket in the Clippers' end. It's circling in the lane, and now it's back over on the near sideline, taunting and demeaning those trying to catch it. I would guess that the Pacers had trouble catching it because their mascot uh, wasn't three days into a meth bender. <laughs> Uh, then, then some time passes. There are no bat games that we hear of, at least. We think we're in the clear. And then, boom, March 10th, a bat at the Spurs-Bucks game in San Antonio. That is seven bats in a span of three months. One is a fluke. Two, coincidence. But seven? Something is up here. And five of the seven were in San Antonio, a franchise that is no stranger to bats, who, of course, could forget the most famous moment in basketball history <laughs> on Halloween night back in 2009. Here's the outlet pass. There's the bat. <laughs> Manu, Manu's tired of that stinking delay. Sean, that's our AT&T connection of the oh, game no, right there. Yeah, it was Manu. <laughs> An amazing performance by Manu for sure, but let's also not forget the dude who does not even hesitate to hold out his hand to accept a dead bat. <laughs> uh, in the years since 09, the Spurs have had a few minor bat incidents here and there, nothing major. Uh, like there was the time that D'Angelo Russell filmed one on his phone during warm-ups. Yo, where's Ginobili when you need him? Man, we got bats. Yeah, unfortunately, it turns out that that bat had told his wife he was somewhere else that night, and so that video cost him... <laughs> cost him the cave and the kids and the divorce. So thanks a lot, D'Angelo, again. Uh, but this year, this year it seems like the bat business is booming. What is going on? Why are there so many bats in San Antonio? From February to September, millions of bats migrate from Mexico to San Antonio. She says the winter months they spend in Mexico is their mating season. Therefore, while they are here in San Antonio, they double in population. They had their exotic vacation down in Mexico, and so they've, um, they're have they pregnant when they come to San Antonio. So it's a great place to raise a family. Uh, there's something else I found in my extensive research that I thought was pretty suspicious and that maybe you guys would want to know. Every single game since 2009 where we can confirm that a bat or multiple bats made an appearance, the home team won a Jazz game, a Pacers game, and six Spurs games. Six. Pretty convenient for a team that finished the season with a record just above the cutoff, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I think that the Spurs are releasing these bats into the stadium on their own to give themselves an advantage. Now, look, I am not so reckless that I would say something like that without the info to back it up, so go ahead, let's look at the facts. First, there's the mascot. That thing has been the one to catch the bat at least three times. How is that possible? <laughs> if we accept the premise that there is a human person inside of that costume, how could someone whose motor functions and peripheral vision are greatly restricted manage to catch a creature as evasive as a bat? Could you, human person, do that uncostumed? I doubt it. <laughs> but more importantly, each time that the mascot has captured the bat, they've been wearing 
a Batman costume. <laughs> so if these bats are showing up unannounced, then how does the mascot just happen to have that suit standing by? And even if they did, to go back to what I was just saying about motor functions and peripheral vision, how are they putting it on that quickly? You believe that a person in a costume puts on another costume and catches a bat all in under five minutes? That's exactly what they want you to believe. <laughs> Clearly, someone is tipping off the coyote and he's practicing his bat catching skills and I bet if you inspected that costume you'd find like a high-tech sonar device implanted in the hand to help with the catching of the, they're very common. Wake up, sheeple. <laughs> oh, you need more evidence? Fine, here is a photo of Greg Popovich reacting with rare delight to one of these recent batscapades. Look at that. He loves it. Very entertained. Surely he'd want to talk about it. Let's go ahead and see what happened after the game when he was asked about this moment. The Coyote have the play of the game there in the first quarter? <laughs> I, you know, I'm oblivious. I don't even know what he did. What he did? Tackled the bat. Caught the bat in the oh. net. Did he do it or did the other guy do it? No, it was, it was Coyote. I did. I, I looked right at it. I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> That is a look of pure fear. Somebody told him not to talk, lest he reveal what he knows. You know, it's a lot like Manu's Jersey retirement last month. That was a whole hour of speeches about Manu and hanging something from the rafters. And not one person mentioned Manu's run-in with a creature that literally hangs from the rafters. <laughs> Folks, they're being silenced. <laughs> Right now, you're probably thinking, I don't know, Katie, I don't think a bat really gives you a competitive advantage basketball-wise, so I'm not really understanding where you're going with this. Like an idiot, let me break it down for you. Here's the deal, I am incredible at Sudoku. I can complete that puzzle in a very short amount of time. But if you put a bat in the room with me, well, that's gonna break my focus and it's gonna take me a lot longer. Athletes are a lot like me. They're a lot like me, they get distracted by bats. And most of them don't like bats. Quote, Giannis, I don't like roaches, I don't like ants, and if I don't like that, I don't like a bat. It's a regular Dr. Seuss. Trey Young, quote, if you're not afraid of bats, well then I don't know who you are. <laughs> Hell, just watch the two very different reactions from players in the Spurs-Nets game this season when there was a bat. First up, Pau Gasol from the home team, totally chill and fine. Oh, and then there's D'Angelo Russell, visibly sweating <laughs> and hiding in the tunnel like a terrified baby child. <laughs> it's psychological warfare, people. And it even goes a step further. Listen to this. There is only one player in the whole league who isn't afraid of bats and isn't on the Spurs. Milwaukee's Brooke Lopez. He told SB Nation, quote, if you see a bat around and it bites you, you have a 75% chance of ending up a superhero. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll probably get really sick, but it'd be cool to be a superhero. You don't need to be too afraid. I'd say, give it a shot. <laughs> March 10th of this year, the Bucks play the Spurs in San Antonio, and guess what happens? It's a bat, I already told you that. It's a bat, a bat happens. <laughs> and Brooke stands out on the court with his arms outstretched and made himself available <laughs> to be bitten by a bat. The Spurs knew that that was gonna happen. They knew that if there was a bat, that Brooke Lopez would put himself in harm's way and probably get hurt and have to leave the game, which is exactly what they wanted because he is averaging one half steal per game. So obviously <laughs> they have to shut that down however they can. Guys, I'm just saying, the information is right there in front of you. Connect the dots. It is so obvious. The Spurs are releasing bats into their stadium to give themselves an advantage that seems cute and fun so people don't notice. And you know what? It's actually brilliant. I never even thought about harnessing the power of bats to use against my enemies. And now, it's all I think about. <laughs> I know so much about bats now. I'm obsessed with bats. And that's why I got a bat for the studio. He's been very quiet back here, which is good. I'd like to introduce you all to Bat Patricia. 